Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Connecting Dots podcast. As usual, I'm your host Osama and today we are joined by Carolyn all the way from Boston, US. Um she is the current uh, field CTO for Cloudera and she has spent a good 3 decades of her life working in the tech sector. So with that, let's let's get started Carolyn. How had your prior week been so far? Thank you so much. Um well, I just finished up my birthday last week, so that was good. Um, oh, nice! Happy fun. birthday! <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was fun. We had some friends, some friends over, um, ate some cake, mm -hmm. and uh, enjoyed some barbecue. So, what could be wrong amazing, with that, right? Amazing, amazing. Yeah, get it done before winter comes back. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Cool. So, Carolyn, we're very excited. Uh, ex First of all, about your professional journey, and we'll later uh, dabble into your role. But first of all, you know, share your professional journey with us. You've spent a good amount of your uh, professional life in tech. So, how had that been for you? Yeah, it's been a great journey. I've done a lot of really interesting things, and I'll have to say, I didn't enter into the tech field with any particular plan in mind. Right. Um, I guess that's just not, you know. That's not the way my brain works, right? I'm a very <laughs> flexible person. I kind of make it up as yeah. I go along, uh, right. which really bugs my family a lot. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. yeah, I started out after after I graduated from college. I um, worked at a small a small company in Providence. It was great to work there. It was a great culture. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from a lot of really smart people. And uh, it was a great launch to my career. It's always great to have a first job that's that's really awesome out of the gate. Um, I then moved right. on. I did some. I've done a lot of different things in a lot of different industries. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the stuff that I'm in right now, it didn't really exist as a as a as a as a field, right? Like, so when I graduated from school, yeah. there was no cybersecurity yeah. because there was barely an internet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was no social media, there was no big data, there was, yeah. you know, there's just a lot of things, no data science, although yeah. artificial yeah. intelligence, you know, data yeah. has been existing for many years and it's now just coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I've done, I started off and I think, you know, the most important thing to do is to start off your career and build up those kind of foundational skills that are going to carry you throughout the rest of your career yeah. and the rest of your journey really in life. Um, you know, so I learned mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, you know, really solid things about design and architecture and of software, how to program, how to think about maintainability and, um, you know, extensibility mm -hmm. of the software and, ma you know, making everything so that it was maintainable. And I learned a lot of really useful skills that carried me throughout my career. Right. Uh, I then moved into um, a consulting job where mm -hmm. I was working, I, I had um, I had worked with some some people at, at my previous job, and then I went to another mm -hmm. job, and then I finally uh, joined a very small company. And this, I think, was a really great experience where I really learned mm -hmm. how to do a lot of different things. Because when you join a small company yeah. as a co-founder, you're you have to do everything. You have to right. do sales. You have to do yeah. marketing. You have to take mm -hmm. out the trash, right? You got to take out the trash exactly. and be your own IT team. You can't call the IT team when your IT Correct. doesn't work. <laughs> you um, are the IT team. <laughs> I, I developed software. Yeah. I developed yeah. training, and and can, you yeah. know I, I did a lot of different things. So I think this was a really mm -hmm. valuable experience, and um, you know I ended up getting out of it mostly because of my own personal commitments, you know, to family. So I had a family. Right. I had small children, and mm -hmm. my job at that time involved a lot of um, a lot of travel right so i was working with yeah. teams that were doing um, aerospace and defense and healthcare, mm -hmm. um, health m medical devices and mm -hmm. those are all kinds of things that you just kind of have to do on site so i was doing a lot of traveling and that just was not yeah. compatible with with having yeah. small children um, exactly. so yeah. I, I decided to um, get into cybersecurity because SecureWorks was close by and mm -hmm. uh, you know i knew people that worked there and, and and that's how right. I got into cybersecurity, mostly because it was it was there and it seemed interesting. It seemed like a good mm. 
it's a solid, you know, it's cybersecurity is not the kind of thing that's going to go away, right? Like it's not, Correct. It's not a fad. Yeah. It's only <laughs> um, going to evolve e to become even more complex, to be honest, but a hundred percent is not going to go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So it's, so it's here to yeah. stay and it's a solid, yeah. you know, it's a solid career. So I started there uh, and mm -hmm. then I got into big data. It was just, a, I, I wasn't really looking to change jobs, but I, I got mm -hmm. a recruiting email it was funny because I had talked to my husband a few weeks before and I said, you know, this big data stuff is really interesting. I liked working with customers. I wanted to get back yeah. to that more kind of customer facing role that I had in the training and consulting role that I'd done mm -hmm. before. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I kind of missed that. And I said, if I was going to do another consulting, another consulting thing, I would do it in, in uh, big data, right? Because it's right. a huge, yeah. huge emerging trend. And mm -hmm. so a couple of weeks later, it's like one of those, you know, the secret kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't put any notes in the drawer or anything like that, but, um, yeah. but yeah, it, it just came up and it was like, and I got a, I got a, um, a recruiting in mail from, um, from the folks at Hortonworks and the rest is kind of history. I joined Hortonworks yeah. as a, uh, as a, a solutions engineer and mm -hmm. I've, uh, I'm now a field CTO. So. Um, I, I joined Hortonworks. They merged with Cloudera, yeah. and that's how I ended up in Cloudera. Nice. So Excellent. yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's um, yeah. it's been a very interesting journey, and I'm really happy to be you know in this role at Cloudera. I think it's a really special role, and mm -hmm. um, I love it. So amazing. Um, so I I would specifically want to talk to you about you know having courage in your professional life because i've seen your profile as well and you know considering your journey you've you've been working with companies for a long time then you made certain switches and then now you know it's it's really good that you've ended up in a technical leadership role but i would want you to talk a little bit about having that courage in you that you know you you are not really in your cocoon anymore and you are you are open to take calculated risks and challenges for your career progression so what would be your opinion on that? Yeah, so it was interesting when I when I kind of broke off and became an independent contractor and did a, a role as a co-founder mm -hmm. right. and started working from home, it was mm -hmm. the mid 1990s, which was nobody did yeah. that <laughs> at that time. Everybody kind of worked yeah. you know, like nine to five jobs and you joined a company Correct, yeah. and you stayed there. Uh, and, yeah. and my mom was like, what are, what are you doing? This is, yeah. this is, this is silly. You know, it's just like, yeah. this is like working from your, home your... before working from home was even a thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, you're, you're leaving this yeah. job and you're, and yeah. you're not gonna, you know, you don't get a guaranteed salary and all this stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was young, right. I didn't yeah. have a family at the time and mm -hmm. the market was great for software engineering. It was right before right. Y2K and it was a very prosperous time for software engineering. I said to her, well, simply, mm -hmm. you know, um, if it doesn't work out, I'm just going to go mm. get another job someplace else. Right. And, and, um, and, you know, that kind of carried me through. It turned out that, you know, the, the consulting training gig worked out for me. Yeah. Um, but if it didn't, I think I would have just gone off and, and found another job. So I was lucky that the industry was at a good yeah. time and it wasn't like, you know, the, the post, post Y2K mm. bust, um, yeah. <laughs> where it wasn't so easy <laughs> to find a job. So, yeah, right. Um, so other than that, uh, I want to talk to you about your current role as a CTO. So right now, I mean, that position does call for not only your technical skills, but also uh, also a sound business understanding as well. So in your opinion, uh, how should technical people who are aiming for uh, technical leadership roles should develop a strong business acumen as well? Yeah, I think the most important thing. So, if you if you want to go into executive leadership, you have to know something about business, right? I, I don't yeah. come from a business background. I don't have an MBA, but mm -hmm. I've tried to build up my skills uh, in that area. But yeah, it's really um, it's really important to be curious, right? To understand mm -hmm. the full the full picture really of what you're doing. So when you're mm -hmm. at a lower level or a, a kind of medium level of technical, technical work, um, people will kind of dole out things for you to do, right? So, yeah. you know, do this story or create this mm -hmm. feature. Um, you yeah. have to kind of take a step back. Why mm -hmm. am I creating this feature? What is it doing for the customer? And 
you know, what is the value that we're delivering as a business? And what are the tenants that I should look at as I am developing the software, right? So if you think about Amazon, yeah. Amazon is all about the customer and that's what makes them yeah. successful, right? So if, if yeah. all of their engineers understand that customer success is the number one thing that they're working towards, then they can mm -hmm. make those decisions day to day about how to make the product better for the customer, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's really, you have to be curious and you have to want to understand the big mm -hmm. picture of what you're doing. And that's gonna make you more valuable as an employee, right? Because if you understand how to make those decisions, you understand how to make things better, uh, then that's just mm -hmm. gonna make you more valuable as, a, as an employee. And right. uh, on the market, uh, in general, right? So mm -hmm. um, you have to be curious. Right. You have to want to understand that big picture. And you have to be able to make the kinds of cross-company release, cross company relationships that are important, right? So understanding mm -hmm. who's, in, who's using our software, what are, mm -hmm. how are they using it, and making those connections to actually talking to those people are really important. Um, right. Because being able to have that business mm -hmm. acumen and the technical acumen, I think, is mm -hmm. really a special combination of skills that not a lot of people have. Right, right. Excellent. Um, so after you started executing in this uh, CTO position, were there any myths that got busted for you? Um, so one thing I think I learned going into the executive realm is that you don't have to it's you're more you're less relying on yourself and you're more leveraging mm -hmm. the, the business, right? So one of the examples yeah. that I have is um, when I went into the, when I went into the mm -hmm. role as field CTO, uh, mm -hmm. a big portion of what we do is setting kind of the thought leadership within the industry. So this means like speaking at conferences, getting mm -hmm. um, interviews at, um, you know, uh, online publications, uh, you know, just a lot of different things, videos and, and that sort yeah. of thing. And as I went into this realm, I'm like, oh God, I got to start writing yeah. some articles. <laughs> and um, uh, I better, I better yeah. like, you know, I actually wrote yeah. like three or four articles before I, <laughs> before I got started. And yeah. then um, they hooked me up with the PR team and the PR mm -hmm. team is great at this, right? They mm -hmm. know what the art, they go out and they seek out what the editors are looking for. They, they have the technical writers that can take, you know, your half an hour worth of interview yeah. and make it into something that people actually want to read, right? right. Um, so yeah. I think, you know, the it's less about you and what you're doing, but how mm -hmm. you're using and leveraging the power of the organization to kind of push things forward. So um, yeah. that's something that I'm learning as I, as I move up into the executive ranks here. Right. So other than that, uh, what would be your recommendation in terms of people who are in the early phase of their career? How should they devise a meaningful career growth strategy so that not only they can grow horizontally, but they can also grow vertically and maybe eventually end up uh, in executive management positions, you know, several years down the road? So I would say always be learning always be in a position where you're learning something new. And if you're not learning something new on your job, do yeah. it outside of your job. One thing that I'll say about mm -hmm. moving up the career ladder is that mm -hmm. you're, you're going to have to put in some work mm -hmm. on your yeah. own to develop those new skills because you're not always going to be in the position in yeah. your job that's going yeah. to kind of drive you towards yeah. the direction that you want to be in. So right um always always yeah. be learning mm -hmm. look for those opportunities where you can get those types of new skills so if you see if they're asking for volunteers and mm -hmm. it's something that you think well this might be interesting for me go ahead and try it and don't be afraid to fail everyone especially right. women right mm -hmm. women are afraid of failure if you get like i mean i was i uh, to be honest i got a b in my first c C uh, programming yeah. class, you know, uh, when I was yeah. in when I was in college, and, and that was uh -huh. like traumatic for me, you know. I was yeah. like, oh my god, I got a B, <laughs> but I've gone on to a very yeah. good. Um, yeah. I've gone on to a very successful career, so don't be afraid to fail, and don't be afraid to try new things, 
and get that big picture, right? Make the kinds of connections that you can within the organization to, mm. uh, you know, meet people and increase yeah. your sphere of influence throughout the organization. And you can do that at any level, right? You don't have to be an executive to have those kinds of relationships. There are many people across the organization that, that can do that. Right, perfect. Um, so uh, tapping into your, uh, you know, cybersecurity side. So in that regard, uh, do you have any recommendations of any certifications to upskill or or other than that, is there a, a definite pathway to take to, you know, upskill in this domain? So when you when you take a job as, in cybersecurity, there are a number of different certifications. I would say out of all of the careers in tech, it's probably one of the most security, uh, you know, uh, certification driven, right? And there's very yeah. specific certifications for very specific skills and very specific jobs that you want to do. But what I'm going right. to say about certifications, and this might make me unpopular, is that it doesn't <laughs> make you more marketable on the job, yeah. on the job, um, you know, on uh -huh. the job market, right? Certifications, mm -hmm. it's kind of like checking the box. And mm -hmm. a lot of people can pass the certifications, but not necessarily mm -hmm. have mastered. It's not, it's not a guarantee that you've mastered those skills just because you've pass the certification. Yeah. So, I mean, what I would say is do the certifications. A lot of times uh, in some of the jobs, they'll actually help you get the certifications. They'll give you the, um, you know, the time and the, the money to do them because they're very costly. You know, so, yeah. you know, taking a class, some of these classes are six or seven thousand dollars a pop. So, yes, exactly. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, you yeah. want to get whatever, um, whatever help mm -hmm. you can from your organization. And mm -hmm. I would say, you know, focus on those those um, certifications that you really feel are going to give you those foundational skills that are going to help you excel at the rest of your career, right? So mm -hmm. um, anything that has to do with architecture and, you know, like I did yeah. secure programming certification, and that's carried me through a lot of different, you know, a lot of different products within my career, thinking about security and building security from the ground up. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't think it's as much about what certifications you take, but the, what you learn doing them. That's the most right. important part. And, and I want to link it to another question. And again, you might be working with cloud technology a lot more now uh, because of how, how things are evolving. So in that regard, I, I really want to ask you that, you know, if somebody were to to master, let's say, object-oriented programming, they can go to lead code. They can do like a hundred different difficulty level problems, and then they'll they'll be a lot more confident after that. They, you know, I know something after that, right? So, in terms of cloud technology, there there are speciality pathways of all all the service providers out there. So, let's say if you choose one of those certifications and you finish all of them. But then how do you complement the certification knowledge with hands-on experience? Like when is it the time that you can confidently say that, you know, now I, I am an expert at something? Um, well, I'll have to say <laughs> it's difficult to be an expert at this stuff, even if you've been in yeah. the field for a while, because it's constantly changing. You, you learn yeah. something. That's the thing about certification. You learn something. And then whatever it is you learned for that certification is now like completely different because, yeah. <laughs> of, you know, because the products evolve. So, yeah, um, you're going to be constantly having to learn new things. And I would mm -hmm. say doing a, completing a real world problem is the most important thing to focus on. Right. So okay. the whole point of all of this technology is to do real things with it. So if you can Correct. do a real world yeah. project, and you can um, publish a GitHub or write a Medium article. Um, I think those are going to really all display yeah. a certain a certain amount of mm -hmm. knowledge and the ability to apply it, which is what you really need for for this career. So, how do you prepare yourself when you're applying for a higher job roles uh, that you know you have certain skill set, but then you also need some of them to be missing from your uh, your expertise so you can learn in that position. So how should one really prepare themselves for such a scenario? Well, the first thing is you should engage your leader, right? And tell them, I want to do whatever the next step is, right? Because okay. honestly, only the, only the very most proactive managers yeah. out there, most of the time they're preoccupied with 
whatever it is they have to accomplish, right? And right. career career planning, I mean, it's just a matter of prioritization, right? Like not, not mm-hmm. every manager out there has has, you know, hours and hours of their day to dedicate to, gee, Mm. I wonder what this person wants to do on their career, right? It's, Mm. it's kind of, uh, it's not, it's not their primary thing that they're thinking about. So, you know, you need to be thinking about your career, looking at the different um, openings or different responsibilities that you have within the organization, make it known to your leader that you want to do whatever it is you want to do. And then help Mm. have them engage their help, ask them specifically, you know, I value your opinion. I'd like to know how can I get to, you know, whatever it is you want to do and, you know, help, help them understand, you know, they'll help you understand what it is you need to do in order to reach that level. Right. So sometimes things are Mm. very mapped out. Right. So there's a matrix right. that says, you know, if you want to be um, so, for example, we have one of these in solutions engineering. If you want to do, um, you know, this at this level, you're doing this. And at this level, you're doing that. You know, there's they're pretty well mapped out. Um, mm-hmm. But then sometimes you get to there's a certain there, sometimes you get to a certain point in your career and there's kind of a bar you have to leap over. Right. So for, correct. If you yeah. want to be a principal solutions engineer in um, mm-hmm in Cloudera, there's a specific set of things that you need to accomplish. You need to um, have done certain things and it's pretty well understood uh, what needs to be done. So I would say, you know, make your, make your desires known, engage your leader and have them help you. And if they're not helping you, then you need to either find somebody outside of your org that can help you. um, Either someone who's a, a, a peer of your of your leader uh, or someone that you have mm-hmm. a relationship but that's more of a mentoring kind of situation right right uh, so other than that if we change the conversation a little bit and if we talk about your employer uh, so what kind of cool traditions do you have at work so we have a really great group in solutions engineering so we have what's called a subject matter expert program and i think this mm-hmm. is a great this is a great uh it was it's good for our company because we have a whole bunch of people yeah. that are developing specializations and knowledge in in areas of the product very deep knowledge and the way right. they communicate that to customers so it's very good for the company but it's also good mm. for the people who are participating in the program because they get to establish themselves as thought leaders writing articles um doing you know uh mm. writing solutions and and helping out with the customers in that way so uh, that's a great, and it's a really a great group of people. They're super passionate and very right. smart people. And that's one of the things that I love being mm. at Cloudera. I work with so many smart and capable people mm. that are also just great people to work with. And that's just really awesome. Um, the second, right. the second uh-huh. cool tradition we have is um, sales kickoff. Mm-hmm. So sales kickoff is a, a meeting at the beginning of the year. It usually happens in February. And mm-hmm it's everybody gets together and we learn about everything. It's like, it's literally like drinking from the fire hose. Um, But we also get to meet all of the people in person that we work with across the globe. And that is really powerful. We haven't been able to do it in person for the last couple of years because of COVID, but I'm hoping we'll we'll get back to it. Right, and now switching gears a little bit, and if you were to talk about academics, so in your opinion, Carolyn, uh, for students who are still in university, what are some of the best practices that they should be doing more of uh, to set them up for success eventually in their professional life? I think when you're in university, it's it's all about learning those foundations, again, that are going to take you throughout your career. So really learning... Um, you know, for example, when you've once you've done one programming language, that helps, and, and once you've mastered how to do that, then that yeah. helps you across the board. You're in learning another those kinds of skills that you learn are learning another programming language, and then learn how to think, right? Mm-hmm. Learn how to think, and uh, be independent, right? So mm-hmm. a lot of times when you're in high school, it's all about you know you kind of have to regurgitate facts and. And, you know, what happened at this time and that time. But when you're getting to the university level, you really need to kind of break out of that and start to do some research. You know, take advantage of research positions. I see all of the really awesome, um, you know, 
things that my so I have yeah. a, a a kid in college now and I see you know all of the awesome research opportunities that are yeah. out there for people um mm -hmm. and then to just taking advantage of that academic world because you know once you go out into the regular industry yeah you know you're going to be doing interesting things but you know you're not going to be doing yeah. those kinds of like groundbreaking unless you work for like maybe three different companies yeah. right you know three different you know but you're not going to be you're not going to be out there yeah. doing groundbreaking yeah. research, right? You're going to be doing kind of yeah. more uh, professional professional skills. So I would say take advantage yeah. of that, um, and then you know right. make make those kinds of connections that you're that are you're mm -hmm. going to be able to have a network as you get older mm -hmm. and you start to get out in your career, and you can you know call up somebody. You know, I know pe the people that I went to school with are doing so many interesting things. You know, one of the guys that yeah. I, uh, one of the guys that I um, graduated with worked mm -hmm. for, was Bill Gates, you know, worked for Bill Gates, right? Really? Nice. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, <laughs> I get people that work at NASA, you know, yeah. <laughs> Just, I have a lot of interesting people uh, and a lot yeah. of interesting networking opportunities. So it's, it's been really great. Excellent, excellent. So now, if you were to reflect again from your uh, from your executive leadership role, uh, how do you think an MBA adds value to to you know someone's business knowledge, or how so, or maybe how how should we rather use an MBA to you know upskill in our professional journey? So I think once you get to the executive level, it, there's very little that they give you in a computer science or an engineering degree that's gonna that's gonna prepare you for the types of skills that you need as to do in, in management right I mean being doing yeah. an MBA now I'm saying this not actually having ever done an MBA but I've been mm -hmm. working on some of those skills you know so finance understanding I'm a math yeah. person right but understanding mm -hmm. all of the terminology and how do you use yeah. finance and how do you leverage all of those skills it's definitely something that you need to have as an executive because you're making decisions based on, uh, and even in my job in sales, right? Like I have to understand a business, um, uh, you know, how to, how to communicate business value to the customer, yeah. right? That's really a finance kind of skill. So, um, you know, understanding that, understanding how to uh, do management, understanding how to execute on a business strategy. So it's interesting to have an idea as an entrepreneur and say, wow, I've got this great idea. Yeah. But really the entrepreneurial, whether or not it's going to be a success or failure is all about execution because many people have had many excellent ideas and yeah. failed, right? Because they couldn't execute Absolutely, it was too yeah. early or they just didn't have yeah. the right people or, you mm -hmm. know, so it's, it's really... Um, there's there's a business side to almost everything that we do, uh, and I think yeah. you know I, I've thought about going out to get an MBA, but then um, yeah, I, I'm just trying to pick yeah. up the skills. Yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. I mean, you you're already there, right? So it's a lot of experience that that counts as well. Maybe for someone who might go to school to learn these things, maybe you're just learning it on the go, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I'm very much I'm very much a flexible person. I read a lot of different things. Um, I read very deep technical articles. I listen to technical podcasts, but then I also mm. read um, Harvard Business Review. Um, I read books about about personal productivity, mm. negotiation skills, soft skills. I read a lot right. of different things. Nice, nice. Um, <laughs> I, I get the Audible. You know, I get the Audible. Yeah. I get. I'm a yeah. member of Chief, so they have a whole uh, whole programming as part of Chief. So I listen to a lot. They have excellent broadcasts uh, for Chief and excellent guests there. Um, mm -hmm. So I read newspapers. I, I'm really very. I'm, I'm very broad in what it, what kinds of things that I read. Right. Interesting. So if, if we are to extend this a little further and talk about mentorship, how do you think, in your opinion, one should leverage mentorship uh, for boosting not just their technical skills, but maybe uh, letting them advance in their leadership uh, ladder as well? So mentorship is very important. And if you have a great mentor, then that can mean all of the difference within the organization. So mm -hmm. having that kind of relationship, if the mentor can introduce you to other parts of the organization or help you in your career, right? So 
they they mm. might be able to help you along in your career journey understanding what are your next best moves um, or either or or even opening up opportunities for you within the organization so i think that's really important i also think you should have a mentor and you should be a mentor and even if you're only a few years out of school, you can still mm -hmm. mentor other people that are just coming in or maybe people that are transitioning over from a different from a different field. So I think it's really important. Um, I, I also think coaching is important as well. So coaching is a little bit different because it's not someone telling you what mm -hmm. to do. It's someone asking you, you know, what do you want to achieve? What, what types of things do you want to do? And then helping you understand how you're going to get to that position. And it might right. be a person who's not necessarily within your organization. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is really, it's really important to have coaching and also to have a network of people that, that you can bounce ideas off of. So. I didn't really yeah. have this uh, this type of experience until I joined Chief. Uh, when I joined Chief, we have what's called our core group, and mm -hmm. it's groups of it's uh, it's other women from across different segments. So you know, one of the people in my core group is a lawyer, another person's in tech, another person's in the travel industry. You know, it's, it's a very yeah. diverse group, but yeah. everyone has really good feedback, right? You know, like you mm -hmm. have a you want to talk about something you. You talk about successes, you talk about things that are hard, you know, how can I get this done? Yeah. Uh, and you have a group of people that you can trust to kind of bounce ideas off of. And they're outside of your organization. So sometimes you can talk mm -hmm. about things that, um, you know, that you wouldn't be able to talk to somebody who's within your organization. So I think mentoring is important, being yeah. a mentor, having a mentor, and then also getting coaching. You can do this through a number of different organizations. Um, Mm -hmm. You can hire a, a professional coach yourself, or you can do it through something like Chief or through another uh, through another type of organization like that. So it's pretty, right. pretty Perfect. cool stuff. Yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. So other than that, uh, what are some of the core values that you really uphold in your professional life? Yeah, so I think, you know, most importantly, and the thing that I organize everything around is, is this the right thing to do? And doing the right thing is not always the mm -hmm. easy thing. A lot of times it's more difficult to do the right thing, but you're always going to feel yeah. good about it in the end. Uh, right. And ultimately, I think that that, if you can make the right decision and you can feel good about what you did, even if it was harder, then um, mm -hmm. you still feel good about it. The other thing that uh, core value that I have is being empathetic. And that's something that I think I've built up mm. as a skill as I've gotten, as I've gotten, you know, kind yeah. of on in my career. Um, yeah. You know, being empathetic mm. doesn't necessarily mean that you agree with the other person or that you even, yeah. you know, that you have, that you think about, you know, you're like, okay, that's yeah. okay. It's not that you're just saying it's okay. You have to understand yeah. where that other person is coming right. from. Yeah. Uh, and, and really, you don't have to be okay yeah. with it, but you have to understand yeah. where they're coming from. And then yeah. that So just maybe to understand the basis of their ideation as well, that what circumstances were they put into based on which they were saying what they're saying. So it maybe brings more clarity to the discussion, right? That's right. It helps you yeah. understand and it helps you see their point of view. And I think that's very important, especially if you're working in a customer facing role to be empathetic yeah. and to, you know, you see the customer, you understand what they're going through. Um, yeah. Maybe they didn't always do the right thing that they should have done, but um, yeah. you can see what what their perspective is. Uh, and I think that's very important. You know, sometimes we don't always have good days, right? Sometimes, Correct. sometimes yeah. you get to you get to the to the restaurant, and um, you know the poor person who's taking your order mm. has had a really bad day. You know, somebody came in Absolutely. and they they yeah. got mad at them. Yeah, and and yeah. they're not always they're going to be as friendly. And you're like, well, maybe yeah. that person just had a bad day. Um, yeah. And I think also I just try to be kind. I try to be kind mm. to people. Um, and mm -hmm. I tried to do the right thing. So in your opinion, what is your current definition of success? So my definition of success 
is making a positive impact on the world. I want to be doing something mm -hmm. that's good, that's getting us to a better place in the world. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it's something I'm really passionate about. I, I, mm -hmm. I feel like if I take a job, yeah, it has to be one that I feel like yeah. it's, it's um, you know, it's advancing the state of the world, right? And making course, the world a yeah. better place. Um, and I, I like to do it with great people. I like to have a great team around me uh, because I think a lot of the really hard problems that you need to solve, you can't do it yourself. You have to have a great team. Um, 100%. And I just like yeah. to be happy and feel feel satisfied and like I'm in a good yeah. place. So I think those are my three guiding principles. Right, that's perfect. And just one more thing that I can take uh, take it further from the last uh, last bit of conversation is about hiring. Uh, so again, when you're in, in a hiring position, then what what would be something that you would really value the most in a candidate? Because again, people would rather focus on competency. Uh, they would want to focus on maybe soft skills and whatnot. But sometimes it's not really, you know, not everybody can have 100% of both, right? So what is something that is of prime importance to you? And what is something that you believe, you know, people can learn over time? I look for raw material, honestly, because most of the jobs that we're hiring for, you know, we have this mile long list of skills that people are supposed <laughs> to have coming in, right? And there's nobody exactly. on the planet yeah. that could possibly have all of yeah. those skills. And so the people that you hire, they need to be good to work with. They need to be enthusiastic. They need to be self-directed. Um, yeah and motivated, right? And those people that kind of have those, those just basic um, skills, you know, and want to learn and, and are quick on their feet are gonna yeah. be more successful than potentially candidates that come in with maybe quote unquote the right skills, but they right. don't fit, they don't work well on a team or they don't, um, they're not motivated to reach their potential, right? They're, they're just kind right. of, like skating along right so i think that right. having the right kind of raw materials and being curious and having being able to go out and and um you know attack the job with with yeah. enthusiasm <laughs> uh i think that's yeah. you know given that you know we, we've had so you know in my in my job with um solutions engineers you know th there's a long mm. list of things that people need to have and you know yeah. we've we've been trying to hire candidates from non-traditional roles because we're trying to reach out as part of diversity yeah. really is is kind of reaching out of the normal ways yeah. that you normally would get candidates yeah. and trying to think yeah. about it a little bit differently right interesting so now we're now that we're reaching the end of our conversation carolyn and i, I honestly had a great time talking to you uh so Same i here. i want to yeah thank you uh so i want to finish it off on the topic of work-life balance because again even in in our job stages you know as compared to you i'm still very early in my career and sometimes you know we get to be in back to back to back to back meetings right so in, in so for someone who is in the executive team like yourself first of all how do you avoid burning out and second of all, how do you manage, uh, you know, your life between your family and work? Uh, so <laughs> work-life balance yeah. is tough. It's really tough. Yeah. I sometimes feel like you either work or you have a life, right? Our, our jobs are very demanding. Our home life is very demanding, especially, yeah. you know, like trying to just keep up with everything, right? Um, you know, cooking dinner and mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have a great support system behind me. I've got my husband, I've got my Excellent. family, yeah. you know, so every, every person who's in any of these demanding jobs, I think really has to have that support system behind them. Either that or you don't have a family, right? Like you're yeah. just, <laughs> you're just there. You're, you, Absolutely. You, right. Yeah. So you have to have the support yeah. system and, yeah. um, something that I'm learning as I go along and I'm not very good at is saying no to things and really focusing on the things that you need to get done. So I'm a great yeah. prioritizer. I have a list of like 8,000 things that I have to do. <laughs> and the, I, I'm like, sad. I know exactly what I have to get done every day yeah. and I do those things and yeah. I get through it. But um, mm -hmm. I need to say no more to things and I need to kind of stay in my lane, yeah. you know, 
Um, yeah. And those are things that are that are hard for me. I, I, I like to say yes to things, but, um, you know, I think I need to get yeah. better at saying no and and uh, protecting protecting my uh, myself from <laughs> from being overwhelmed by absolutely. things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's thank you so much. I'm yeah. always learning. Yeah. And on that note, Carolyn, we'll end the conversation here. I honestly had a great time talking to you. And as far as our audience are concerned, if you like the content, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. And um, until the next episode rolls out, do check us out on other streaming platforms. And uh, this is your host, Osama, signing off. Uh, take care of yourself.